everybody, and welcome to another Agile IT Tech Talk. I'm your host, Sean Spicer, and today we're going to talk about deploying MFA. Now, I've done a Tech Talk in the past where I've gone through the technical steps of implementing MFA. It's easy. I'm going to do it in the next video. It's probably going to take me about three minutes to roll MFA out for an entire organization. I'm going to take a little bit more time because I'm going to implement some of the things we're about to talk to today. This is about planning and rolling out MFA. So why am I talking about MFA? Everybody should have MFA. If you're an IT admin and you're watching this video and you haven't rolled out MFA, go look at the docs, watch our next video, do it right now, or go start working on your resume for Red Lobster. So why is it so hard? Why do we not have 100% adoption of multi-factor authentication across every environment? Well, there's an easy answer. MFA is too much work for end users. And a lot of us in the IT industry, we don't really wanna make people's lives more difficult, but we also need to keep our environment secure. Now, I'm in marketing. My job is to get the CEO in the news. In IT, if you're a CISO, CTO, CIO, director of IT, if you're an IT manager at a six person company, your job is to keep the CEO out of the news. And MFA is too much work? Let's see how that worked out. Now, as we come on the air, there are reports of gas stations across the Remember Southeast this? running dry at the same time that the price per gallon is running up. And tonight, the governors of North Carolina, Georgia, and Virginia have all declared states of emergency. Now, all of this comes after a ransomware attack targeted Colonial Pipeline and forced the company to shut down over the weekend. So this is ransomware, right? This isn't MFA. So there's also news reports about how this happened, uh, as I said in my opening statement, there was a compromised password of a virtual private network or a VPN account. Uh, this account apparently did not use multi-factor authentication, which again is kind of just a basic cybersecurity hygiene uh, this is, this, this item that you know, companies should have in place, um, making it harder for people to gain access. Prior to the attack, did your company require all employees to use multi-factor authentication? Ranking member Porton, in, in the case of this space. particular uh, legacy VPN, it did only have single factor uh, authentication. Uh, it was a complicated password, so I, I want to be clear on that. It was not a colonial one, two, three type password. Do you know who he looked like right there? The cat. I'm not a cat. I'm not a cybersecurity executive. But they didn't have MFA. They caused a nationwide hike in gas prices. Now, you may just be part of Spacely Sprockets and make gears on bicycles. No excuse. Multi-factor authentication. Watch our last video about making memes in Teams, and you'll understand. So, let's talk about what it takes to roll MFA out through an entire organization. First off, leadership buy-in. Nothing succeeds without leadership, C-level, board of director, whatever you have in your company, buy-in. They have to be behind you on this. They have to want it like you do. Right now is the time. Colonial Pipeline, so many stupid hacks. They don't want to be in the news. They don't want to lose their company because of this. And most companies don't survive a ransomware attack. They don't have 11 million to go throw at some ransomers or hackers. So first off, you don't want to inconvenience a CEO by rolling out MFA and they don't know about it. And what the hell is this? And why can't I use my iPhone? Like, second, have a champion that is involved in the MFA rollout from the leadership team. This can be your CMO, like me, hey, I'm down. Or it can be anybody on that leadership team, but keep them involved in every step of rolling out MFA. They should be in the pilot program if for no other reason than transparency so that they feel that there's input and when the ceo is inconvenienced the cfo can come in and go hey it's money deal with it next educate in advance as soon as you know you're going to roll out mfa start talking to your users get the information out there and keep it simple 
don't send out a 400, 500 word email talking about the Colonial Pipeline hack. That's my job. You're watching me right now, but get out there and educate. Thankfully, Microsoft has a whole bunch of free templates for emails, newsletters, and even these posters to hang up. And if you follow Microsoft's official guidance, they talk about putting banners up around your buildings. I personally wouldn't go that far. But the other thing is get a hold of me, get a hold of your marketing team. This is an awareness campaign. Get them involved. Marketing teams love this stuff. We are really good at communicating complex things simply on a timeline, running a campaign and tracking metrics. This is a no brainer. Treat it like an awareness campaign. If you don't have a marketing team, download the templates or call up Agile IT. We can help you roll out MFA. We require it when we move people to the cloud because it's so important. Next, plan for balance. I will talk about and have talked about a lot. The balance between productivity and security. Use conditional access rules to make sure you're not over challenging your users and then use your alpha and beta groups to determine where that balance is between productivity and security. Next, test, adapt, test, adapt as many times as you need to, alpha, beta, test and adapt your plan for deployment. You and the rest of your IT admins should be in the alpha group, the pilot group. You should be eating your own dog food for the first week or two of having MFA. One, you're gonna identify where it's difficult. You also have the most privileged account. So just by piloting yourselves with MFA, you're improving your security posture. Second, invite volunteers into your beta groups. So you may have people in HR or marketing or sales that are natural geeks that want to try out Authenticator, that they're interested in this. And maybe you can give them a little bonus by saying, hey, if you want, you can also be part of this fast cycle or fast circle for getting the latest updates in Teams or I don't know, give them a map, but make sure that you have people throughout the organization helping you identify the difficulties that are going to happen when you roll it out to the entire organization. Now, plan stages based on your working groups or locations. Have a logical segmentation there. In Agile IT, we've had multi-factor authentication and conditional access since I've been with the company. But we're small. We have two offices. We're in San Diego and we're in Washington, D.C. We would probably work by location. In a 10,000 person company, a 100,000 person company, you may want to do it by location and then do it by working group and set your criteria for success in each group that you're deploying multi-factor authentication for in that we're not going to move to the next group until 100%. That might be unrealistic. If it's a large group, somebody's going to be on vacation. Somebody's going to be on leave of absence. But okay, 95% of people will be enrolled in MFA and have support available. Now, I'm going to mention something. I'm going to talk about this more in the next video. You want to make sure people are aware and people are doing this. And if you're rolling out, if you've got an older tenant, if you're rolling out self-service password reset and multi-factor authentication at the same time, there's confusion that's going to happen because of the enrollment process. This isn't much of a problem with more modern tenants. You should already have self-service password reset covered. If not, go back and watch our video on it. We did that with uh, Paul from our engineering team a couple months ago. Great video, super simple. Next, when you deploy MFA, if you have a bad actor, a threat actor living off the land that is in your environment and has access to emails already, you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna enroll in MFA and take one last swing at your system. You don't want that to happen. And I'm gonna talk about ways to keep that from happening in the next video on setting up MFA and conditional access. But for now, this is the simplest way for me to express how to roll out MFA without impacting your leadership team or your users, no matter what size organization you are. And the end result, man, MFA is too much work. Because the last thing you want to do is wind up with your CEO on the news.
don't do it. So thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a like and follow. If you do need help securing your environment with multi-factor authentication, conditional access, zero trust, or you need higher security environments in Microsoft, Agile IT does it all. Give me a call. I'd love to talk. Thank you.